So everybody likes to watch a, a good animal video on YouTube. Uh, animals that are doing funny things or maybe animals that are doing special tricks to, to animals that are just downright looking cute, right? Uh, even people who have uh, allergic reactions to animals don't sneeze at watching one of, uh, of, of two animals of different species that are cuddling together or, or uh, an animal of one species that's protecting the pups of another one. Um, we love watching those kinds of, of animal videos on YouTube, but one of my favorite things to watch is when an animal does something that's like really smart and it just it kind of surprises you that the animal would would know to do something like that. A junior showed me one, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, of uh, parrots that that uh, the handler would ask the parrot a question and the parrot would respond with a, a particular answer or a particular action to the question that was asked of it. And lots of questions. You could ask those parrots uh, 20, 30 or more questions. And uh, it made the parrot just look super, super intelligent. Uh, those videos are actually kind of addicting. We could, we could get stuck uh, watching them all day once you get started on that. But the truth of the matter really is this. Those are simply instincts that the animal has coupled with some really good training. Uh, no animal will ever be able to invest in the stock market or perform a, a complicated surgery. Uh, no, no animal is, is ever going to be an, an NBA point guard. <laughs> um, they're limited. Uh, they won't win spelling bees. Uh, you'll never uh, have an animal that, that's going to tell you what's on your calendar for tomorrow. They, they really just have limitations. But so do we as people, right? Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you what's coming on your calendar tomorrow either. <laughs> I have a hard enough time remembering what's coming on my calendar tomorrow, to be completely honest with you. Um, I, I struggle with knowing what to invest in. Uh, I, I can't really do complicated surgery myself. And unfortunately, I, I know this is it's probably gonna shock you a little bit, but I think my window of opportunity with the NBA has also closed. I know, but it's true. And the only reason, honestly, that I ever spell anything right is the little red lines that show up underneath it when I type it. <laughs> But I'm not really all that worried about being able to do things when the time comes that I need to be able to do them. You know why I'm not worried about that? Because if God needs me to do something, then he will empower me to be able to do that. And that's probably a pretty tall task for him to empower somebody like me. But it's a task that I'm quite confident he is able to succeed in. My job, really, in all of this, is simply to make myself a vessel that he can use. Your job in all of this is simply to make yourself a vessel that he can use. Uh, back to Daniel here. We kind of started out this week looking at Daniel. I want to look at him again. Listen to these verses, um, chapter 1, verses 17 to 20, where it talks about how God was able to do some great things through Daniel and his friends. To these four young men, God gave, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel was able to understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time that was set by the king that had captured them to bring them into that king's service, the chief official presented them to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and he found that there were none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them to be ten times better than all the other magicians and enchanters in the entire kingdom. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You see, whatever God needed 
those guys to know God just made them capable of learning it. And he gave them the answers and the abilities that he, God, needed them to have at the time that he needed to have them. If God needs me to do anything, or if he needs you to do something, God will prep you, and he will make you ready. I was just actually talking with somebody today who witnessed an incredibly difficult thing to see. And he reminded me of these words. God will use what I went through when he's ready. And that's the truth. But it's also true that there are some things that we can do, you and I can do, to make us a lot more likely or open or trainable, if you will, <laughs> so that we could be like Daniel and his friends and be ready to be used by God. See, a couple verses earlier, we find out that Daniel was not willing to defy his conscience and what he knew to be the right thing to do. So Daniel set out to do the right thing. Not because he wanted to make a statement. He didn't do it for attention. And he didn't do it so that God would like him more. It doesn't work that way. Daniel just worked hard to do what was right before God. And it was when it was time for the bigger things that, are, that were coming in his life, God was able to give Daniel the bigger things that God needed him to do because Daniel was trustworthy with the little things. That's it. That's, that's, that's what you need to know. You see, before you bother with putting the efforts in of trying to teach a bird how to answer questions, complicated questions, lots of questions, before you do that, you're going to make sure that the bird can say something like, Polly wants a cracker. <laughs> and before you and I are ready for God to give us all of the big jobs, he's going to want to make sure that you and I can say, not my will, Lord, but yours. Then you'll be prepared to know the answers to the big questions and to do the big things. Have a great night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.